my name is David Tuckett and I work in the psychoanalysis unit here at UCL. About 10 years ago I began to be interested in bringing together psychology, economics and sociology and in trying to understand behaviour in financial markets. My interest being in instability and why there are booms and crashes which as you know turned out to be quite a popular thing just at the moment. So in 2007, actually leading up to the crash, I interviewed some 50 of the top money managers in order to try and understand something about the decision-making context in which they make their decisions to buy, hold and sell financial assets. What I found was as soon as you go in and talk to them is that their work is characterised by how to deal with uncertainty and ambiguity. Uh, conventional economic thinking uh, does define uncertainty very clearly. They have a term for it, Knightian uncertainty. But having defined, for, defined it, they then more or less ignore it and go ahead by thinking that you can uh, assess the future by use of probability and so on. This was what my people certainly tried to do, but basically when they come to making real decisions, they have to make guesses about the future and they have to interpret information which is inherently ambiguous so that any number of intelligent people can perfectly reasonably reach different conclusions about it. They also have to be convinced about what they're doing. And the solution to that, of course, is to make decisions bringing your emotions into play so that you believe in what you're doing. And this is an effective way of making decisions, but it means that it isn't the same kind of decision-making process as one expects with a normal sort of rational type model. So what I found was that basically what these people are trying to do is to find exceptional stories, things that really seem to be uh, having tremendous promise and at the same time things which were safe. Now of course in real life that's actually more or less impossible or at least it's only occasionally that you find something which is both exceptional and safe because the way the market is meant to operate is that there's some kind of equilibrium between uh, price and the opportunities that are coming away and the risks. So this is quite interesting and we've, I found then that what they essentially did is tell themselves stories about the data to the best of their ability and also look around them to see what other people are doing, what else seems to be going on. And this makes the market extremely vulnerable to being taken over by stories at any time, stories that uh, something fantastic is happening. Because they feared to miss out in two ways. Of course, they feared to put their money in something which is going to be worth nothing, uh, or at least becomes worth nothing. But they also fear to miss out on something that you or someone else is, is, is being successful. So if they see something being successful, there are all kinds of pressures on them to join in. And this tends to mean that the market is going naturally to go up and down like that by the nature of financial assets. Because unlike a television or something you can buy in a shop where you buy it, you take it home, you use it, with a financial asset it's actually ultimately not necessarily worth anything apart from whatever you think it's going to be worth according to what other people want for it later. And so this means that by definition they're volatile, they move around, they create excitement, they create anxiety, and then on top of that you've always got the worry that maybe you'll be left, as people were with bank shares, holding something that nobody wants. So the entire situation is one in which emotion, imagination and fantasy seems to, seem to be interesting. Now of course in a traditional economic model none of this kind of material uh, is included, even in the more recent uh, so-called behavioural economics, that, that looks at cognitive elements and so on, not at this type of fundamental emotional uh, and uncertain situation. So that uh, what I'm going to be trying to do with this new grant from the Institute for New Economic Thinking is trying to deepen this work, trying to look at uh, a wider range, range of people and try to uh, also think about ways in which we can devise experimental and other situations to test some elements of the hypothesis.